Tonight's subject is the martial arts. Karate, as with other sports, is big entertainment. Not only that, but let's learn how you can have the right instructor and schooling to really do it right. Tonight we have an extraordinary individual. He's made a tremendous impact in the community he's involved with and the lives that he touches. With over 40 years of martial arts experience and several internationally recognized ninth degree rankings, he's been a part of the Arizona scene since 1973. Here is Sheehan Rudy Crosswell. This is not a studio. The studio is where you study dance. Okay. Okay. This is a martial arts dojo. Dojo means the, the, the place you study the way. Do is the way. Judo, Aikido, Karate Do, Kendo. Do means the way of some skill. So the dojo is like the building where I practice the film. Okay. So this is where I, I'm studying real martial arts. You know. basic block like this and counter punch, all right? But beyond that, what I can do is I come in, here's my basic block, I turn that block into an arm bar. So now I hit him here, I got an arm bar. When I hit him here, he's gonna bend, the hand comes up here like this, I bring him around, hey! I still got this, if I want this here, okay? Okay? Hey! Two. And number three. And number four. Sharon Crosswell, after uh, witnessing your sparring segment of the class, do you think that would have a, a negative impact as a, someone off the street coming in looking at your karate school as far as, hey, I might get hurt in your program? Uh, one of the things we practice in martial arts is mental control of your physical functions. So that means I'm practicing the depth of my technique and uh, the amount of force I use and so on. And so as an instructor, for example, if I'm sparring with a, a white belt, a beginner, I slow everything down and I soften the amount of force I use and so on. And as that person graduates in skill, and their timing gets faster, and usually I know their timing gets faster when they hit me. <laughs> uh, there's a real practical um, application to this, you know, because a lot of people say, well, why do you say that today it doesn't apply? And I always say, well, I beg to differ with you because, well, of course, empty hand techniques, whether it's wrist locks or pressure points or punching or kicking, that is hand to hand. From a, from a standpoint of why do you study weapons, well, it's a distance thing. If, if the other guy has a stick, a baseball bat or something like that, and you know how to uh, go against that and also pick up a stick and be able to use that against For example, a bow staff, which is a long staff, six foot staff, uh, if you know how to use that, you could pick up a broomstick or a mop handle, okay? Um, if you study sword, which is a shorter two hands holding it, that's very comparable. Like here in Arizona, you know, there's golf courses all over the place. Everybody has golf clubs. Mm -hmm. If you pick up a golf club, you'll find it's about the same length as a sword. Okay. Um, fireplace tool, umbrella. So you can take sword technique and apply it to your putter. <laughs> okay, in terms of self-defense. The martial arts is a great tool uh, for teaching discipline and focus. And it's funny, in fact, now Newsweek magazine had an article recently about why your kids should study martial arts. And we're finding that students, uh, young people that start martial arts, they get a discipline, they get a sense of focus, they understand how to focus on something. And from their martial arts training, they become a better student. I was searching for you know, information about Rudy Crosswell on the internet and yeah. came across things such as your, your magazine and you know your associations that you're involved with and yeah. things of that nature. In fact, we just launched our website, Arizona Budokan, it's actually AZ 
B-U-D-O-K-A-N, ArizonaBudokan.com. And on there, we have a lot of information uh, that talks about Kobudo, Shitaru Karate, Shinkendo Sword, and so on.